Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about some other stuff out there that Venom is a part of. There's other comic books out there that the Venom symbiote and Eddie Brock himself are a part of that are not the main book. And I know there are people out there kind of like me who's very critical of the Donny Kate stuff and uh, and kind of want an alternative, something else Venom related that they can be positive about. And I would say a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is very positive, at least from my point of view. I really like a lot of stuff going on out there. But then I also know there are people that really love the Donny Kate stuff that want more Venom. And so if you're in that camp as well, I hope you like this episode. I know this was supposed to be my Venom 2099 episode, and I'm sorry, I actually kind of screwed some stuff up. I was messing with my settings on my phone. I was trying to do new things, and I kind of screwed up that episode, and I just want to reshoot it. So I just need a couple more days. I have a busy work schedule over the weekend, so I thought I would just bang this episode out and the next episode out, because it's a really easy episodes. And then on episode 349, we'll talk about Venom 2099. And then, of course, we'll do something big and fun for the 350th episode, uh, because we're also, in this month, remember this time last year, we were celebrating the 30th anniversary anniversary of Venom uh, in comic books and now we're on the 31st anniversary so for 350 episodes we're definitely going to do something fun. I don't have a topic yet that we're going to talk about but I will say I have a stack of comic books that I've been buying over the past two to three months from Marvel that had a bunch of digital codes in them and uh, and so you know I want to give those comic books out to you guys. I want to give out as many codes as possible and I'm hoping I have around 30 or 31 because it's the 31st anniversary. I'd like to give out 31 codes so I'm going to look through, count them all up and try to get them ready but hopefully I'll have around that amount amount of codes to give out to you guys. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that because I'll be giving out a ton of free digital comic books to you. And that's courtesy of Legacy Comics, House of Secrets, and uh, also Golden Apple Comics here in Los Angeles uh, because that's where I buy my stuff from, from those three stores. And I appreciate, you know, I, the stores in general, but I love giving them the money that the little bit of money that I make and trying to support all of them because uh, they're great stores. And if you're in the LA area, definitely check them out. I usually have the links to their websites down below. So you can also order stuff from them online if you're not in LA and you want to support them in some way because they're very awesome stores. Uh, but so we'll do all that in episode 349 with Venom 2099 and 350, episode 350 with, you know, the anniversary and, and the digital code giveaway. But today what I want to do is, like I said, if you are loving the Donny Kate stuff and you want more Venom, that's what I want to do today. I want to talk about other stuff that Venom is in that you should be picking up. Um, so we're going to start with the very easy, simple one, which is the free comic book day issue and Savage Avengers. Because in this one, you get, uh, you know, like a sneak peek of what's going to be happening coming up with Carnage, with Absolute Carnage and everything. And there's also a free comic book day Avengers book that ties into Savage Avengers here. And Savage Avengers is the new book by Jerry Duggan, which if you didn't see my interview, definitely go back and check it out. I got to ask him a few questions on free comic day uh, and it was a lot of fun. He's a really nice guy and he says there's a lot of stuff coming up with Venom and that Venom is kind of the central focus in many ways of the story he's telling. So again, we're going to have options. We're going to have other Venom stuff in here. And again, I'm, I'm even wondering if this is the Venom that has Eddie Brock attached to it or not, because so far we haven't really seen much of them in the first episode or the first issue and the free comic day issue. And Jerry said right around issue three is when we see we should see more and learn more about Venom uh, in his storyline and how he ties into his storyline. So I would imagine that, you know, we're going to get our answers hopefully around then of which Venom it is and, and all that stuff. So anyway, the book's out there now. Pick it up if you want more Venom action. Um, like I said, not a ton of it in the first issue, but they're going to set up a lot more. But in the free comic day issue, uh, there is some cool stuff in there that you should be checking out. Um, and then also there's War of the Realms. If you're not reading this uh, and you're a Venom fan, definitely pick it up. Uh, this book has been really, really great. This week they released issue four. And don't worry, we're going to do another, and there you go, Venom on the cover there. Venom's on this cover too, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but in, you know, in the first episode of that we did for War of the Realms, we covered like maybe five or six of the issues, like the two or two or three main issues, and then like three or four tie-in issues. So we covered a lot of stuff, and we did it while playing Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, the new one, the infinite one. So we'll probably do that again when uh, issues four and five and a bunch of tie-ins come out. I'll probably do a, a second episode of that, and then when issue six and the ending come out, we'll probably do a third episode of that. So I'm glad you guys like that format. We'll definitely continue it going, and we'll make a trilogy of talking about the War of the Realms books. But again, these all have digital codes in them, so I'll be giving them away on episode 350. If you're unable to get a copy yourself, definitely stay subscribed because I'll give out free copies of all the War of the Realm stuff coming up. Uh, so issue four is a big one. Uh, it has where, you know, Malekith kidnapped Venom in issue three. And this is the Venom that doesn't have Eddie Brock in it. Thanks, thanks to you guys for pointing that out to me and reminding me, hey, there is a symbiote out there that's running around calling itself Venom that doesn't have Eddie Brock attached. And that's what this is. And then, of course, in the regular Venom book, it's being taken over for three issues by Cullen Bunn and Yvonne Coelho. And they're doing a great job 
with Rune Venom, aka Magic Venom. And that's where Eddie Brock gets a different symbiote from these witches that work with Malekith. And he's trying to use that symbiote and that power that he's in complete control over against them to fight back. So maybe we'll even get a Venom versus Venom fight in this. That would be really awesome. So uh, yeah, so definitely pick this up. And while you're at it, go ahead and pick up Strike Force The War Avengers, which is a one-shot tie-in written, uh, written by Dennis Hopeless that has Venom in it. And this shows you the events between issues three and four. So, uh, or and maybe it's issue two and three, where it shows Venom teaming up with the Avengers, or this group of Avengers, uh, with Deadpool on it, and Lady Sif, and and uh, Captain Marvel, and Captain Britain, and Hulk, Weapon H, Winter Soldier, Black Widow. It's got a really great team, and it's them uniting and going into battle to save people. And you find out that it's not Eddie Brock, it's the symbiote by itself uh, going in, because you'll see some action where a frost giant smashes him, and then he wraps around the frost giant and, like, jolts through his head, becomes like a knife, and like takes like a, a form of a knife or a blade and goes right through the frost giant's head and kills it, which is really awesome. And then if you read that, that'll lead you into issue four here, where Malekith has control of the symbiote after he got control of it in issue three. So, you know, pick up issues one, two, and three, read this between issues two and three, and then read issue four soon afterwards. So again, more Venom stuff there and then also obviously in the main venom book colin bunn if you're you know dipping out on it because donny cates isn't writing it i would say stick with it because there's still some stuff in there that tie in to the donny cates uh run so far like they mentioned rex in issue 13 and they also have dylan being a part of the storyline too so don't miss out on that and then if you also want just symbiote action maybe you want to see the symbiote in action without eddie brock um you know which you're getting kind of in war of the realms a little bit but if you want to see other stuff there's an out of continuity spider-man comic right now called spider-man life story and in this one it's basically what if spider-man actually aged and so i guess that's the best way to put it so it starts off in the 60s when he's like a 15 year old kid then it goes to the 70s and then into the 80s and that's what each issue is going to be it's written by chip sadarsky and mark bagley's doing the artwork it's really awesome stuff as you can see on the cover here it's like craven's last hunt it's spider-man in the black costume being buried and that's what happens in this. They retell, basically, Craven's Last Hunt. It shows Secret Wars. Um, and again, in this continuity, like, Peter Parker is actually aging. So he developed a friendship with Reed Richards. Everyone in the universe is actually aging. You can see the Secret Wars here in 1984. Reed Richards is getting older. He's an older guy. And he's kind of a mentor to Peter Parker. They had a falling out in the 70s. And then now Peter Parker and him are kind of on speaking terms again after the Secret Wars. And while they're there, that's where Spider-Man picks up, obviously, his new costume. He goes over to the machine, just like it happened in the old comic, Hulk and Thor there. And the machine produces a symbiote for him. And that's where he gets the symbiote. And then it shows him being obsessed with it and using it way too much and, and enjoying it. because. Uh, and there's even a little Rorschach <laughs> reference there, which is cool. But it's him using it and... Uh, and Mary Jane not liking that. Like, it, it's it's totally taken him over. And in this world, in the 70s, in the 70s issue, they introduced, like, the clone of Peter Parker and, and Gwen Stacy, and they he found out the Gwen he's known was actually a clone because Miles Warren wanted to keep the real Gwen for himself, like a creepy weirdo that he is. And so the real Gwen died in that incident. And Peter was like, I have no one left. I have no one. He's like, yells at Mary Jane, just like he did in the comic book back in the day. And she ends up, you know, embracing him and they fall in love and they end up having two kids together. And Peter is not ready to give up this power of the symbiote because it's it's giving him what he needs. Like he, he still feels empty without Gwen, even though he's got a wife and kids now. And he's kind of being irresponsible with his feelings in a way to Mary Jane. And I kind of like how this story handles all that, but then also brings Peter back from the brink and it saves Peter uh, in a big way. And that suit that he has, uh, you know, uh, he, he tries to get rid of it uh, like he did in the comic books, uh, you know, in the old comics. But again, this is an out of continuity story, but it's really well done. And then they dive right into Craven's Last Hunt. So Craven shows up in a black suit to take out Spider-Man, but he's now wearing his original suit again. And, uh, and they get into it and it's pretty brutal. But uh, in the end, Spider-Man gets poisoned, he gets stabbed in the stomach and Craven buries him alive, just like he did in the comic. And the suit find you know senses that and it breaks out of the hold that it, that reed richards put it in and uh, it breaks out and, and or reed richards and peter put it in it breaks out and it goes and it gets uh peter from the grave you know as peter's dying it comes in and heals him and it actually turns him into venom uh which is really awesome like it, it brings out the real monster in him and as Craven's trying to hurt people as Spider-Man in the black costume, uh, but still thinking he won, then that's when Venom shows up. And Craven even is like, hey, you did it. You like, you're the monster that I want you to be. I, you know, I, I succeeded. And Peter, you know, has to really try to 
overcome the symbiote in the end. So I don't want to spoil too much there. I know I talked a lot about, about that one, but it was really good. I thought it was very well done, uh, very well told, and it's a nice side, you know, continuity universe where you actually see Peter uh, you know, age over the decades and have a family and, and be, a, you know, like a father and everything and a husband. Um, all the things that we kind of got robbed of during the Clone Saga in the 90s, all, the, all that stuff they took away from him. And then later on with One More Day and stuff, like they took all that away from us. We could have actually had that. So this is a nice peek into a world where that stuff could have happened. So again, if you like symbiote stuff, pick that up. And then last but not least, I would say if you want symbiote Peter Parker stuff that kind of is in continuity, I believe it's written in continuity, I would pick up the symbiote Spider-Man issues one and two. This is really great if you're a Mysterio fan or if you want to learn more about Mysterio before the movie comes out. It's very Mysterio focused. It's Spider-Man fighting Mysterio. It's during the time of the, the black costume, uh, you know, and there's like Gwen Stacy's obviously like a part of it to an extent, but there's, you know, Mary Jane's a big part of it. And it shows Peter's early life at that time uh, when he's going through the stuff he's going through. And Mysterio is intrigued by this new Spider-Man, this black costume Spider-Man that is clearly alive because Mysterio, out of all the villains who fight Spider-Man, Mysterio is getting a, a, a upfront look at what this symbiote actually can do. And it's it kind of scares him. But yet at the same time, he's he kind of is intrigued by it and thinks maybe it could give him some kind of power. So that's what he's after. He's after more power. He's after a way to beat Spider-Man. And when he sees like Spider-Man actually get knocked out in issue two here and the suit saves him and kills somebody, actually kills somebody to protect Peter Parker, even though Peter's you know, blacked out. He has no idea what's going on. Uh, he's been knocked out by this bad guy called Hard Rock. Uh, and, uh, and you know, and the artwork, by the way, is really good. I, I, Greg Land, I'm not always on board with, especially his, his techniques that he uses to draw, but I can't deny some of the stuff he does looks really good, um, even if he is, like, <laughs> tracing, like, adult film stars' faces on these things. Um, it's, it's like, whatever. I guess you find inspiration wherever you can, I guess. Um, but uh, the book doesn't look so bad, and I actually like the Mysterio stuff a lot. Like, when he draws Mysterio, I'm like, okay, cool, that's probably good because he probably can't trace too much there you know he's got to probably actually draw uh, a lot of that so that's kind of fun um you know at least it, it makes me feel better about you know liking a book drawn by him uh but yeah so again peter gets knocked out and this is the hard rock guy that is fighting him and the suit comes to life and kills him like just straight up like goes right wraps around him goes into his head and expands his head blows it right off uh yeah you see it there like he's swallowing the symbiote and then it explodes his head it's it's pretty gruesome stuff um and then like the kingpin gets involved at the end there so uh with along with mysterio and stuff so again it's a mysterio focused story so if you're out there and you want to learn more about mysterio it's awesome but if you also want to go back into the days where peter parker had the venom symbiote uh this is really fun too because peter david's writing it who wrote that era of spider-man back when this was happening and he was one of my favorite writers on the book and cemented him as one of my favorite writers in comics at this time so him getting to revisit it is a lot of fun and he knows the continuity really well because a lot of it he wrote back then so it's nice to see him playing in that sandbox again and trying to fit this storyline into that continuity uh, but yeah if you're out there and you want more symbiote stuff and you don't mind Peter Parker stuff which I'm sure many of you don't I know a lot of you are Spider-Man fans pick up symbiote Spider-Man today pick up Spider-Man Life Story, pick up War of the Realms, and pick up Savage Avengers. There's plenty of Venom stuff going on right now. There's no reason to be short. We're not short on anything Venom. So if you're out there and you're like, hey, I actually don't like the Donny Cates run like I am, there's plenty of options. You know, you have a lot of alternatives here. But if you are liking the Donny Cates stuff and you're just like, I need more. I want to know more about Venom, his history, you know, what it can do, what it can't do. Pick up these books also. These great writers are taking it in a lot of fun directions. And I can't wait to see, especially the way this ended, and we will probably see the symbiote again. So I would say uh, you might even see, uh, depending on where issue four goes, if it picks up where this one left off, you may see me talking about it again very soon with the symbiote combined to one of my favorite uh, Spider-Man villains of all time, which I'm very excited about. So I won't spoil anything for you guys. Definitely check it out yourself. And make sure you're subscribed here because we are going to give away a lot of digital codes coming up. And I want to thank Legacy Comics because actually Legacy Comics and Golden Apple and also House of Secrets, because a lot of these things that I showed you today, I picked up at those stores. So I want to give a big shout out to them. Again, their links are down in, the, uh, in my description below, and you can check out their websites, maybe order something from them online, or if you're in the LA area, stop by and visit them. Tell them the Venom vlog sent you, uh, and, uh, and you know, and definitely check out those stores. They're amazing. Uh, but anyway, that's all I have for today. I thought this would be a quick video. The next one's going to be kind of fun, so hopefully you guys like what I may uh, you know, be talking about in the next episode. But for this one, I just want to talk about these comics. Get the word out there that there's other stuff out there with symbiote in them, and you should be reading all of them because they're all fantastic. 
Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.